I'm Sienna and this is Stitch Crafting. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a seahorse embroidery umbrella. For this tutorial you are going to need a template. I'm using just a coloring sheet and then I'm going to put it. For this tutorial, you're going to need a canvas. I didn't get burlap. For this tutorial, you're going to need burlap, a canvas, a template. I'm just using a coloring sheet. Fabric scissors for the felt. You also need regular scissors for the paper felt, sequence, ribbon, and thread. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut out our template. I separated this part and I removed the main because the main is going to be made out of ribbon and this is going to be a separate piece. You can make these two pieces two separate colors, but I think I'm going to make them both the same color. Now grab your felt, and we're going to pin your template on. Okay. With our pins. Now that our seahorse is all pinned, we're going to cut it out. Alright, it's cut out, so now we're going to quickly unpin it. Remove the paper. There we go. So, it goes like that. And now, we are going to work on the next step. We're going to be doing the stitching on the seahorse and not while it is on the burlap. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to work on this fin. So the fin is pretty simple. I just do a few stitches and I'll show you how to do that. I fixed up the tail a little bit so it would be to my preference. You can do it however you want. And now you're going to grab your needle and thread. I've already separated mine into three strands, the way I like it. I'm going to thread your needle real quick. There we go. Add a knot to the end. If you haven't seen Sophia's fall decoration on burlap, go check that out for more detailed instructions on sewing with a needle and thread. All right. So I'm going to start with this, set this aside, and we're just going to be doing lines from each little lump. So we're going to do a strand going like so from each little bump. Now you can do a long stitch or you can do a back stitch or you could do a running stitch. I'm going to be doing a back stitch. So, come up here, and I'm going to start with going to this first one. So I'm going to start back here, pull through, and the knot should catch at the end. Okay. Now you could just go for it, or you could draw with a pencil or a fabric marker if you have one, but I'm just going to be going for it. All right, so now we're gonna work on the body. You can set aside the tail, and we're going to work on the mane. So now we're gonna work on the mane, and you're gonna grab your ribbon, 
You can use as many different colors as you want. I'm going to be using these colors here. Um, but you can use one, or you can use, I don't know, ten. To attach them to the body of the seahorse, you can sew them on, or you can glue them on. I'm going to be gluing them on because that's faster. Alright, so I'm going to start with this color. And I'm going to set this aside. And what we're going to do is we're going to be, be creating little loops. And that's going to create the mane. You're going to make a lot of them so that they make up the mane. The size doesn't matter. It depends on the size of your seahorse and your preference. I'm just going to be folding mine and looking at them and seeing the size I want. I think that's good. So I'm going to cut it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a bunch of these and then glue them all together. All right, so now we're going to grab our glue gun and we're going to fold each piece in half. Glue at the end, just a little bit, and fold it together. Press down. Be careful to get burnt. And there we go, it's the first loop. All right, so we have all our pieces finished. So you just want to arrange them and then either sew them on or hot glue them on. I'm gonna be hot gluing them on. You want to be careful with the amount of hot glue you use because if you use too much, not only will it leak out, but it'll also make sewing over it really tough when you sew it to the burlap because when it dries, it gets really hard and the needle is hard to get through there. Keep in mind your fin wherever you're going to place it so that it doesn't exceed over where the fin is. I'm probably going to put it around there, so I'd probably end around here. All right, I finished the main, so now I'm going to attach the fin. So set it up the way you want it. And pin it in place. Make sure that the this end of the fin is underneath the body so that you have somewhere to sew it to the body. So pin it in place. All right, check it again, make sure you like it the way it is. And there we go. So now we're just going to do a back stitch or any kind of stitch, I'm gonna do back stitch right along here. All right, my thread, thread and needle. All right, and notch our end. Trim the end. All right, and do any stitch you want. I'm gonna do back stitch. Make sure it got caught, mine did. And pull tight, wrap it around and knot it to finish. Make sure you always knot the end of your work because if not, it will come undone. Trim the excess. And there we go. 
All right, so I have my box of sequins. Open it up. Set this aside. And just like the main, you can either sew it or you can hot glue it. For this one, I'm going to sew it. All right, so now we are going to arrange them. And you can put them wherever you want, but I'm gonna put them mainly on this side and I'm gonna wrap them around the tail. All right, so let's go ahead and arrange them. All right, now that we arranged our sequins, we're going to grab our thread and we're gonna sew them on. For this, we don't want it to be too bold, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split my thread into one or two strands. I'm gonna do two strands. All right, so I thread the needle, not at the end. And I'm gonna start up here with the eye and I'm gonna work my way down. So what you wanna do is you wanna come up through the middle where there's a hole. All right, pull. The knot should catch you. And then you're gonna go out and down. I'm gonna do mine at each crevice in between the two petals. Petals. And you wanna go down, pull, so you get a little stitch like that. I don't know if you guys can see that. Then you're gonna repeat it until you get the amount of stitches you want. So you're gonna go through the middle again. I can't get the middle. If you don't like the look of the stitches, you can also just hot glue them on. All right, so I finished, and so now I'm going to end. Now with the sequins that are closer together, you might not have to knot the end every single time for each individual sequence. You can just make it one long strand. All right, now continue with the rest of the sequence. All right, I finished showing on the sequence, and so now we're going to cut out a piece of burlap. I have already done it. It depends on the size of your canvas. Mine is this size, but what I'm gonna do to attach it to the canvas, is stretch it over it, flip it over, fold it, I don't know if you can see that, fold it over once, and then over on top, like that. And then I'm gonna staple it. So let's set this aside. Now I'm going to grab my seahorse okay, and I'm going to center it all right um, center it the way you want it. I probably made mine a little bit too big, but it's better to be too big than too small. All right, I think that's about centered, and you wanna make sure it's straight as well. And then, we're gonna pin it. All right, so it's all pinned. So now we're going to stitch all the way around, attaching it to the burlap. Now you can use a back stitch or even the running stitch for this, but I'm going to be using a blanket stitch, which is a little bit more advanced. All 
All right, I finished sewing all the way around and now we're going to attach it to our canvas. So you're gonna start with putting it onto the canvas, like so. And you're going to want to make sure it's centered to the best of your ability. I forgot to mention this in the beginning, but you're also going to need a stapler that opens up like this. All right, go ahead and make sure it's centered. It looks about right. And now you make sure it's not crooked. All right, very carefully press your hand on the top and very carefully flip it over, making sure it stays in its place. This end we're going to fold over and then fold over again. If you cut it too big, now is the time to trim it. Open up your stapler. Also make sure there's staples inside. And lay it down like so. Then you want to grab your stapler, press it down, and there we go. I'll do a few to make sure it's secure. All right, now I'm going to flip it over again to make sure stays centered. Pulling mine tight. Okay. Pull it over. Pull it. Flip it over, make sure it's still centered. And now the last two sides are going to be the easiest. I decided to cut this square off because it was just making the area too bulky on the corners. So I just cut it off and then folded it. is much better. Alright, and it's finished. So this is how it turned out. You don't have to do a seahorse, you can do anything you want. Um, you also don't have to do all the medium I did, or you can choose a different medium. Um, this is one I've made in the past. It's a little girl and it's a little smaller as you can see and I use a different kind of burla. It really depends on what you want to do to get your creative juices flowing. If you followed any of our tutorials, don't forget to put it on Instagram and tag us on the post. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Bye! Under the sea. Under the sea.
down where it's wetter Life is so much better under the sea Oh, it's wetter, life's so much better under the sea